first off, thank you to the people who've watched and rated my other uh, MIDI Quest video. In this video, I'm going to go into more detail and show you exactly how to hook up uh, specific knobs or number dials, for example, uh, to what you would like to control. Uh, but in order to do that, I'm going to need to kind of take a step back and just briefly go over what binary is and how it works in case there are some people out there who don't know yet what that is. Um, so binary is basically just a way that you count using only two values, either 0 or 1. And uh, basically you can just think of it like a bunch of on-off switches. I think that's probably the simplest way. Um, in a couple minutes I'll show you, you know, how it works and how to count in binary. Uh, but first off, just bear with me here and, and imagine just a long string of zeros. Because ultimately that's all that it is, zeros and ones. I don't have any ones in here. But uh, ultimately, binary is just one long string of zeros and ones. And so, but, I mean, they're a bit difficult to read when they're all written in a row like this, right? So, um, somebody at some point decided that we could break them up into groups of eight and that they'd be much easier to look at and to deal with. Okay, so each group of eight bits, each, each digit is actually called a bit, and each, of, each group of eight bits is called one byte. So here's the first byte, here's the second byte, here's the third byte, here's the fourth byte. Um, but an even easier way to kind of see those is to lay those out into, into a column like this. So we've got byte 0, here's all 8 bits of byte 0, byte 1, here's all 8 bits of byte 1, etc. Byte 2, byte 3, um, and according to my synthesizer, it goes up to byte 255. Okay, so that's bits and bytes, but how do we count using bits and using, and, yeah, using bits, basically. So let's just look at a, let's look at an example here. So I've got this hooked up to where it is a binary counter. And uh, if I have all of these values off, it's like all zeros. If I turn this one on, this is the first bit, and it has a value of either 0 or 1, right? Uh, but this next one has a value of either 0 or 2. The next has a value of either 0 or 4. I'm sure you're noticing a pattern by now, 0 or 8, 0 or 16, uh, 0 or 32, 0 or 64. And you'll notice our eighth one is missing. Uh, that's because in my synthesizer, I believe this last one's being used uh, to determine positive and negative numbers. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be using this one today. Uh, but okay, so we have one, we have two. What if we turn both of these on at the same time? Well, it becomes two plus one, which is three. Uh, if we have all three of these on. 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. Uh, I could come way out here and turn 64 on, and that's perfectly fine. 64 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 71. Um, so if you can imagine the zeros and ones as being maybe, in this case, lights on or off, then here we have a 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and that number represents the number 71 in our normal numbers, our decimal numbers. Um, so yeah, that's basically how binary works. Um, in this case, we're treating this all as a single number, and um, that number can range from zero, with all the lights off, all the way up to 127, with all of these seven lights on. All right, so how is this used? I, I don't want to spend too long on theory. How is this practically used within MIDIQuest? So practically speaking, we need to go over to uh, our user manual for the synthesizer. In my case, I am working with a Novation KS4 synthesizer. And I've got the user manual here. And I'm way in the back. As you can see, I'm on page 76, way in the back of the manual. Um, in the back of any good synthesizer manual, you'll have 
a lot of this type of information. And specifically, the section you're looking for is the SysX messages section. All right, now notice we've got some familiar terminology here byte, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this section tells me what parameters on the synthesizer are stored in which byte within the synthesizer's memory. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at the one that I'm using as an example here. I have byte 38. How do I know that that's oscillator the oscillator 2 level? Well, if I scroll up here uh, to byte 38, here we go. Oscillator level. Oscillator 2 level, sorry. All right. So I can I can know by looking in the manual that uh, byte number 38 is being used to control the level, that it's the volume, of oscillator 2. But how do I actually set that on a knob? So I'll show you right now. I've got this knob. I ignore the label. The label is just uh, something that was <laughs> something that you can change easily. That has nothing to do with what it controls on the synthesizer. It's just for your own reference. Uh, so the oscillator 2 level, uh, what you actually want to do is scroll down Okay, so W, as I mentioned in my in the previous video, W is one of the internal variables that is used in MidiQuest, I mean I believe in SysX. And so in this case, you want to put in this byte number for W. You want to put in the same byte number for the retrieve offset and the same byte number for the store offset. You also want to be sure to check the use retrieve macro and use store macro. And uh, of course, check with your own synthesizer patch within MidiQuest to make sure that this is the same. But for my KS4, I can find out, as you can find out on yours, what macro is being sent uh, by just clicking this little button here. Um, so macro 1, ret x. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how it all works, but that's what needs to be put in here. That's what was put in here by the company in the template that came uh, with the program. Okay, and then here for the store macro, uh, they use macro 2. That's just what they use. Um, so actually that's how it is that this knob is controlling the oscillator 2 level in my synthesizer because it's referencing byte number 38 based on the manual in three different places the W, the retrieve offset, and the store offset and it's got these all checked properly as well. One last thing you do want to be sure is set is bulk transmit for the COM mode. I forgot to mention that a while ago.